Now, here to discuss whether Britain is racist to the core, please welcome rapper, poet and journalist Akala. <laughs> No problem. Great you're here. I'm a big fan. Loving your album, you. man. Thank you. Um, what do you think about this this motion? I think um, I wanted to give a short answer, but I can't because it's too complicated a question. I think that when we talk about race, we tend to focus on individual acts of prejudice, which is why UKIP often come up because they will overtly say stuff that we find offensive. But unfortunately, the issue of race, if we understand it, is a lot more insidious, and it takes a lot more of a historical view to understand the difference between individual bias and structural racism and privilege. And the idea of Great Britain was intimately tied to the fact that Britain's invaded almost every country on the earth, literally. No, literally, there's a map, you can, you can Google it. And so the idea of our greatness was intimately tied to this idea of empire, which was intimately tied to what Rudyard Kipling calls the white man's burden, to go and civilize all these stupid brown folks that have been writing and having civilizations for thousands of years, but let's forget all of that. And so if we fast forward to today, when we talk about structural racism in Britain, do we have the same institutional disparities in rates of imprisonment that they have in America? Yes, absolutely we do. Do we have the same disparities in terms of who's dying in police custody? Yes, indeed we do. In 2011, we were told we loved Libyans so much we wanted to bomb democracy into them. Five, less than five years later, we're leaving people fleeing the same conflict to drown in the sea while giving a woman space in a national newspaper to refer to them as cockroaches. Mm. And when you refer to humans as cockroaches, that is a mandate for murder. Let's be clear about that. The moment human beings become non-human, that is a mandate for murder, and there's a long historical parallel with that. Today, Germany, the country that bombed this country, you know, in our grandparents' lifetimes, so theoretically the grandchildren of Nazis, can get in and out of England easier than the grandchildren of people from the Commonwealth who fought against the Nazis. And where do they come from? When we talk about immigrants, do we mean people from Australia and New Zealand? Didn't Boris Johnson go to Australia and say, hey, we're culturally the same? Was he talking about the Aborigines when he said we, that? We call them expats. Right. White people have such a different way of classifying themselves that white immigrants are expats yeah. and non-white immigrants are immigrants. So when we say immigrants, if we go to border control, we can go there, Yarlswood, and we go and look at what, who's there. It's not a bunch of white people from New Zealand. Um, so we have structural forms of privilege and bias that are much more insidious and much more difficult to overcome. Um, the reaction to Africans and Asians coming here post-World War II. To rebuild the country after the Queen's German cousins bombed it, the reaction to them was one of general hatred. It's illogical. These people who had formerly been colonized by Britain had fought in both world wars. India gave 2.5 million volunteers, for those who don't know. When we talk about being saved by America in the war, we want to talk about being saved by India and Russia. That would be a bit more accurate. But that's a bit inconvenient. But the reaction to those people and their descendants has been one that, that is about structural bias and privilege. The greatest metaphor for this might be Canary Wharf and Tower Hamlets. True. If you look at that predominantly Bengali community that has to look at Canary Wharf every day, how many of those people work in Canary Wharf other than to clean toilets? I, I only got into that through Grime. So the first thing, I'm yeah. listening to Grime records and they're, they're all rapping about E14. Yeah. And I'm going, where's that? And I'm like, Canary Wharf? Yeah, they're What's definitely not rapping about Canary Wharf. <laughs> <laughs> I, I suppose what I'm saying, it's not about saying that there is, there's bias and bigotry everywhere in the world country my grandparents come from, they, it's pretty much generally accepted that they don't like gay people. But what's interesting, race even plays a role in that. In Jamaica, we have disgraceful homophobia. No one ever says it's because of Christian fundamentalism, because even though it is justified in explicitly Christian fundamentalist terms, because only Muslims do bad stuff because of their religion, because we know almost all the Muslims in the world are brown. Whereas when a German wings pilot crashes and kills 150 people deliberately, or the man in Norway killed nearly 90 people. I was in Australia when that happened. This is how uniform the agreement is that white people will be portrayed differently. The Australian media referred to Andres Brevik as having terrorist-like tactics. Yeah. I mean, to think about that. Yeah. This guy killed almost 100 people, and he's just almost a terrorist. And he'd written a crazy thing about Muslims. Oh, it's very clear. I mean, he was a terrorist, by, yeah. by any standard. The idea that white is right isn't just a European idea, it's an idea that has had insidious implications, because no matter what, the 700 people that were left to drown off the coast of the Mediterranean, were they white human beings, they wouldn't have been left to drown. And they certainly wouldn't be called cockroaches. Well,
anti discrimination isn't exclusive to Britain, of course. Let's see how one Australian news anchor dealt with the issue of race while talking to a pair of twins in this incredible clip. One of the sisters is obviously black, the other is white. The Alma twins come from a mixed race family in the UK. Maria has taken after her half Jamaican mum with dark skin and brown eyes and curly dark hair. But Lucy got her dad's fair skin, good on her, along with straight red hair and blue eyes. <laughs> At least she was honest. What, what gets me about it is we have this whole talk during the election about the Australian point system. Let's be more like Australia. Australia is one of the most racist countries oh, in the world. Yeah, yeah. And, they're, and also they're putting forward the idea that black people don't belong in their country when all the white people get skin cancer. And the original people were black. I mean, they were treated as flora and fauna. Until 1967, they were legally classified as flora and fauna. Yeah. yeah. Plants is, and animals. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, this is what we're supposed to aim at. And there's nowhere in the election campaign where I've seen that said. There's no one said Australia's not a good model. Well, this is who Boris Johnson says we're culturally similar to. So at least he's being honest about at least his section of British society. OK, well, let's have a look at an actual conversation that happened on Facebook recently. Someone's saying, I, uh, off tomorrow for Poland Day. What the fuck? Never heard of it. <laughs> Why? And we don't get a fucking day off for St George's Day. What a joke this place is. <laughs> As you say, they don't stay off for St George's Day, so who gives a flying fuck about Poland Day? For fuck's sake, it's for the Poles, we're British. <laughs> Are you sure it's not Poling Day? <laughs> <laughs> well, Carl, thanks very much for Not joining us.